Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can customize and save presets for transitions inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So in this video we'll talk about customizing a normal transition and then also customizing fusion transitions which will allow you to add extra nodes for extra functionality in those transitions. The first step of course is going to be to add a transition onto the timeline on the border between two clips. So if you haven't already, be on the edit page, go up to the effects menu, and then look for toolbox video transitions and let's find a normal transition. So a really typical example would be the cross dissolve. So let's just drag this onto the border between these two clips. So if we go ahead and play this cross dissolve, you'll see it's probably about the most basic transition you can have. And there are settings in the inspector that we can customize about this. So let's say that we wanted a preset where the cross dissolve always has some easing in and easing out so that it's fast in the middle and slow at the beginning and end. So we can change our ease curve from none to in and out. So let's go ahead and play this effect again. I'll go back here in the timeline and we'll hit space to play the video. So you can see that the transition is a lot faster in the middle. I'll play it one more time so you can tell. Let's also assume that we wanted this transition to be two seconds by default. So I'll just type two into the duration. You can also see that updates on the timeline as well. So these are some pretty basic changes, but let's save this as our first preset. So what you have to do is right click on the transition, not the clips behind it, but the transition, and then choose create transition preset. So you can give it whatever name you want, you could just leave it as the default cross dissolve preset, but I'll change it by saying dash in and out ease to sec duration, and then we'll hit OK. So now if we look through video transitions, we should be able to find that preset we just saved. So I'm going to scroll down here in video transitions to where we get the user menu. Uh, we can see the name here. It's a bit long, so we can't have the full name here. But if we click on our current transition and we cut that away, so I'm going to do Command X or Control X if you're on Windows. We can just drag and drop the preset back onto the timeline once again. So just like any other transition, we just pop it in there. And so we can see that when we add the user preset back in, we start with the two second duration and ease in and out for the ease curves. And we can go ahead and just test and play the clip. So that could save us a little bit of time, but that's pretty basic. So let's show how you can customize a fusion transition and then save that as a more complicated preset. So I'm going to start by clicking on the transition and command Xing that to cut it away. And you can find right under user presets and video transitions, you have fusion transitions. So I can hover over a few of these and you can see their effects are a bit more complicated generally. Noise dissolve might be one of the more interesting ones here because you can see the transition isn't just linear, it kind of has waves in it. And if we go down here, you have other ones like tunnel of light, everything gets sucked away. And then we have the second video clip come back on the other end. So just find a transition that you like, and we can go ahead and customize it. So I think I'll go back up here and we'll work on the noise dissolve. So I'm going to drag this onto the border between two clips to add it just like any other transition. But now if we click on this transition, and then we look in the inspector and then transition, you can see effect noise dissolve, but there's this new icon over here to jump to the fusion page. So if we click on that, it's going to show the node graph for this effect. You may see the node group not opened like this. It may just be a single node, but whenever you see this kind of yellow bar down here and a few boxes stacked on top of each other, that represents a node group. So you can double click on that and you can see all of the nodes that make up that video transition effect. So from this point, we can either click on each nodes and customize them, or we could add extra nodes onto the node graph to add extra layers of complexity to our transition. So if you click on one of these nodes inside of the node group, you may notice in the inspector, it's not really showing anything. So all you really need to do here is to double click on the name of that node, and it should show all of the settings for that node. So now what you can do is jump in a few frames for the effect to kind of see a preview of what it's actually going to look like. Obviously, at the start and end, you probably won't be seeing anything since the effect hasn't started yet. So now we can change some of the properties here. If we want this border between the two clips to be less of a blur, um, less of a nice soft transition, then we can take the softness setting and lower it. So we could just make this zero. And now you can see there's uh, absolutely no blur between the two edges. It's either the first clip or the second clip. It does not blur together. 
Uh, on the flip side, you could increase the softness and make it transition even smoother together. And now it's really hard to tell where one begins and the other ends. So you might like that. Let's go ahead and jump to the fast noise option here and uh, make sure the menu is expanded and you'll see all the settings once again. So the fast noise is what causes this wave thing to occur. So in the meantime, to see the shape a little better, you might want to go to the dissolve and just turn it down temporarily for the softness. And now let's jump back to the fast noise and we can edit this. So if you want this wave thing to be uh, more dramatic, more waves to occur, you can take the scale and scale it upwards. So now we can see a lot more stuff pops onto the screen all at once. And if we play our effect from start to finish, we'll see that really changes it a lot. So maybe that's too much on this scale. I'll lower it down to something like, I don't know, six. Let's also go to the middle frame here. So about frame 14. And let's turn the dissolve softness back on to something we like. So I'll put it at 0 0.25. So if you want to add extra nodes to the effect to just have extra layers of complexity, then let's try adding one. So I'm going to click over here for this brightness contrast node. And that will give us some extra settings we can apply to this effect. So first, let's disconnect the media out from the original node group over here. So I'll just click on this line. And now I'll take the output from noise dissolve to brightness contrast and brightness contrasts output, which is the gray box, to the input, which is the yellow triangle for media out. Okay, so now we have this node that we can use to control other settings. So let's say that we wanted to lower the brightness down. So we could just take the brightness down to about negative 0.09. But that's not much of a transition. So let's actually make it so that there's a keyframe for that at 14 frames in. So go to frame 14 here. And you'll know because of the little red line that goes up and down. And let's keyframe the brightness here. So this will be the value of the brightness at that particular point in time. Now let's go to frame zero. And let's change the brightness value to zero. Since that would be the original brightness coming from the original clip. So we'll move the brightness to that 0 0.09 value over 14 frames. So let's just play that and you'll see what that means. You can see how the video gets darker as it progresses to here. So at frame 14, that'll be the darkest point. Let's jump to frame 29, the last frame of this 30 frame animation. And let's change the brightness to zero here again. So after you have one keyframe selected and you set a new value at any other frame, a new keyframe is automatically created. That's this red keyframe diamond you see over here. So now we have three keyframes, 0, 14, and 29. And those are the three points which set our brightness values. So now you'll see that the brightness just gets darker until it hits the middle and then it gets brighter again. So now if you like how this edit of the original noise dissolve effect has churned out, let's go ahead and actually save it as a preset. So back on the edit page, what we're going to do is, of course, like before, right click on the noise dissolve effect here the one we edited, and then choose Create Transition Preset. So for the preset name, it might call it Noise Dissolve Darkness Variant. I don't know. And let's just go ahead and hit OK. So just like before, uh, we have a new preset over here in the user category, which only exists if you've actually created presets. And let's test it by adding another copy of the stock clip over here on the right side. I'll go to that point, and I'm going to Hit T to go to trim mode and pull in the edges here on both sides so there's room for a transition. Now let's drag and drop the new preset over here. Hit play. And you can see that that effect is going to do what we expect. It's going to have those new preset settings. So from this point forward, it should be there in the user menu. You can use it in any of your videos. So that's pretty much the basics of how to edit and save presets for transitions inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. I've been Chris. I hope all of you found this video useful. Thank you for watching to the end, and I will see you in my future video content.